Okay, it's noon, so let's uh, get started. So welcome to our second session of the Presentation Ideas Conference. It's going really well so far. We've, we've been uh, learning, learning so much, and I, it's great I get to sit here and listen to this. Of course, by the time it comes around to my presentation at the end of the day, I'm not sure I'll have any energy <laughs> left, so hopefully I won't be droning on and on and on and doing death by PowerPoint <laughs> when it comes my turn. So um, this, our, this presentation is being done by Troy. Troy is the president and co-founder of TLC Creative Services. They're a design studio. He is a Microsoft MVP, and he's got a PowerPointBlog.com. Uh, posting tips, tricks, and examples since 2006, and does a presentation podcast as well. And I'll let him tell you more about it. All right. Well, thank you. This is very exciting. I'm really excited. I have not used this web-based presentation tool, so hopefully everything runs as expected. I am glancing over at the chat panel and the Q&A panel, so if anything comes up, let me know. Feedback or, hey, you've got a fly on your shoulder or whatever it is. So let's start off here. We're going to talk about really, 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 really big PowerPoint, and we're talking about big screen size or making PowerPoint do more than what is kind of generally um, done and it's one of the things that we do a lot of so I've been asked to share some of that expertise and happy to do so. So let me start off with a little bit of an introduction. I am based in Southern California so unlike most of the country I have no snow. Um, it's still uh, well, Southern California in the San Diego area, and this time of the year, we still have blue skies, a bit cooler weather, it's at least 70, um, and absolutely no snow here, uh, but I am going to be in Baltimore next week, so I'm sure I will get a little bit of cool weather there. My work life pretty much is PowerPoint, and I get to work on some pretty awesome projects. I mean, I'm pretty excited about the work that, that we do. Two other things. I have a, uh, let's see here, let's see here. We're a boutique design studio. We have an in-studio design team, so it's not just myself. I'm one of the I'm one of the co-founders. We have a full design team. Everybody works on it. We focus on PowerPoint templates, presentation design, event branding, and custom projection sizes, which is the important part because that's what we're talking about today. Um, I started a, I'm awarded from Microsoft as a Microsoft PowerPoint MVP. Oh, my video is glitching according to this. We had this happen during the test. I may try and fix that in a moment. Let's get through the intro here. Um, Let's see here. I started a PowerPoint blog all the way back in 2006. So if you ever have a question about PowerPoint, search there. It's probably something I've done because it's tons of tutorials and examples. And then uh, three years ago, just over three years, let's see here. Is it just over or just about? Yeah, it's, it's been more than three years. Um, started a presentation focused podcast. Very excited about this. It's a lot of fun. It's where myself and two other great presentation designers, Nolan and Sandy, we talk about everything presentation twice a month. Check it out and uh, let other people know about it because we're just doing it for fun. Okay, let's move on with our actual content here. I have a disclaimer to start things off with. I'm going to talk about really, really big PowerPoint and working with really, really big resolutions because the files are bigger does mean we have bigger images, which does mean bigger file sizes. So I know the title said it's screen size, not file size, but in general, these files do get to be a bit bigger, um, especially if we start bidding, adding video elements and stuff. But we're really going to worry, work on talking about the big presentation. It says my audio is glitchy. Let's hear, I'm going to turn off the video. Okay. Anybody chime in and tell me if this gets to be a bigger problem. Um, I don't know if I have a solution or not. So my disclaimer number one is the title is a little misleading. We're going to talk about really big presentations and bigger file sizes because everything grows when you add larger resolution images. What we're going to do so we're going to talk about things like this. Um, today, we, I have just under an hour to talk about presentations on big, unique size screens. PowerPoint or Keynote. Definitely can note that Keynote is a part of this. Um, the, it's just the, the content source for these is really, really big screens, and we're designing PowerPoint to fit those screens. TLC Creative Services has become a resource for uh, many AV production companies, putting on meetings and shows where custom screen sizing is kind of becoming more of the norm. Um, I've been using PowerPoint and Keynote 
for these type of presentations for over 10 years. Lots of trial and error learning. Um, it's a definite trend for companies to be going with the ultra-wide and multi-screen productions. It, it's just increased the amount of it. So what I'm assuming is that as a presentation designer, you're going to be asked to do something like this. You've been asked to do something like this, or it's good to know how something like this is done so you can provide assets and some background. So I'm gonna try and share some of that information here. Here's just another example, a uh, really big uh, screen that was done here, very cool. And I am pointing out here, kind of another disclaimer, I'm blocking out a lot of end client use here. So you'll see some blurred areas. Those are blurry on purpose. Uh, let's see, what else can I say? I got a little few more. This is another one here. This is two screens, the one on the far right here. Hmm, this is a good question. You guys probably, can somebody chime in? Do you see my mouse if I'm pointing over a PowerPoint slideshow? I made an, yes, fantastic. So this is a standard 16 by nine screen, very large size. This is what we're gonna call an ultra wide. This is all PowerPoint driven. Here's another one. I have no idea why I set those to fade through black. This one's fantastic. I'm gonna talk about this one towards the very end. This one is 80 feet long, 12 feet high, LED wall. It was a phenomenal pro, uh, project to work on. Tons and tons of fun. Um, okay, <clears throat> so. I want to start with some nomenclature. There are a lot of technical phrases, and I want to make sure we all use the same meaning for those phrases. So I'm going to spend about four minutes here, hopefully, and kind of go through just a few of the basics. It should give us a grounding in not only terms, but in the technology. Okay, here we go. Aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is well, it's aspect ratio versus size. It's really, really important to understand this. I'm assuming everyone has the basics, especially with four by three and 16 by nine aspect ratios, as those are kind of our daily world in presentation design. So everyone has a quick foundation. Here is a quick run through of what we mean when we say aspect ratio. Um, in you know that 1950 through 1970s TV we grew up watching, the traditional square aspect ratio is what that was. It literally means there are four units across by three units tall. Not, well, it's the aspect ratio. The shape stays the same, but it can be any size. So I grew up with the typical medium-sized TV. My wife's family back in the day had the ultra cool little small TV in their kitchen. They were both, even though one was small, one was larger, they were both four by three aspect ratios. Same aspect ratio, same TV programs, but physically different size screens. So then let's go forward. And let's, uh, let's say, hey, we go into the 80s and 90s, and the really cool families, they started getting widescreen TVs. And by the 2000s, that kind of became the standard for computer screens. 16 by 9 is the aspect ratio. It literally is 16 units across by 9 units tall. That's how we get the aspect ratio. It can be this size. Hey, my morph didn't work. That's kind of a bummer. Or it can become as large as this. You know, it, again, it's the same aspect ratio, but the size can be different. Okay, second thing to talk about is the term ultra-wide. Ultra-wide, not an industry term. It is a term that we use in our studio to describe any project wider than 16 by 9. An important math note, we're looking at aspect ratio or the dimension. So smaller numbers may actually be bigger projection. As example, our 16 by nine standard widescreen, probably the computer screen you're looking at right now. Um, it, it's the same presentation. Okay, let me just bring up the example here. So here's a 16 by nine screen. If we want to go to a three to one at the same height, it's a much larger projection area. So three to one means three units, let's see, how would I do this? Uh, three units wide by one unit tall, but when you make them the same height, you're gonna end up with a huge screen. So the numbers are smaller, screen size is bigger. This gets really confusing when, if you're not really in the mindset of how that works. Okay, next element. Let's bring the screen size down a little, but the aspect ratio up. This is the Hewlett Packard Z38C. It's a curved display computer monitor, something I'm kind of enamored with right now. I've been looking at it. Hey, it's Christmas time. Maybe it'll show up under the tree. I kind of doubt it, but it's a, it's a hope. This makes, well, this is literally two side-by-side -side, um, 
16 by nine standard monitors. So right now my workspace, I know you can't see it, but I have a left monitor, I have a right monitor, I have a dual screen setup. This is one monitor that is two screens wide. It's really cool. And it's a great example that the aspect ratio can change. This is a 29 to one, tw uh, excuse me, 21 to nine aspect ratio. It is a standard 16 by nine is 1920 by 1080. So 1920 across, 1920 times two is 3840. This monitor is 3840 by 1600. Again, we've got some unique aspect ratios going. If we were designing a presentation for this, we would need to know a number of information, not only the aspect ratio, but the pixels. We're gonna get into that. Um, this one is also 37 inches wide. So this is a big desktop unit. So it's kind of cool, but it makes a really good example that aspect ratios are not really standardized any longer. Okay, last two. <clears throat> then we dive into building some ultra wide presentations. When a presentation is designed, it, it has to be shown. Today I'm focusing on live meeting presentations. So not kiosks or self um, running presentations, but somebody's going to actually present it. And it's going to either be a projector or an LED wall. With projectors, they can be very small conference room sized ones, like the one I have pictured here. Uh, I assume everybody's seen something like this. They're small, uh, one person can lift it. They range in brightness from 1,000 lumens to maybe 7,000 lumens if you get the really, um, well, more robust ones or it can become something much larger, much louder, much heavier. It could become something like this. This projector does the exact same thing. The, uh, the difference is this is, has a ton of fans, has a ton more technology behind it, it has an interchangeable lens, but it's instead of 1,000 to 7,000 lumens of brightness, these are gonna run in the 10,000 to 40,000 lumens of brightness. And if that's not enough, a lot of times the meetings I'm working on, they're gonna take two of those big monsters and they're gonna double stack them and do uh, converged projections. So now we're at 20,000 to 80,000 lumens of projection because there is no such thing as too much brightness when you're trying to get a meeting to look vibrant and impressive. Now, the opposite of projection, or the other end of projection is LED walls. LED walls are awesome. They have changed the industry. They've changed what we need to know for presentation design. Because the thing is, is LED walls, they're actually little, they're, they're Legos. They're, they're tiles that connect together. There are no configuration limits. Um, a quick example, this LED wall, it's from a recent project. I was brought in to develop the content, run through the, and run the presentations. The dimensions on this wall are 80 feet wide, 12 feet tall. So I showed a photo of this at the very beginning. I'm also going to use this as an example later to show a little bit more about PowerPoint, but let's talk about the LED aspects of it. This LED wall is literally hundreds of LED panels. Um, that in very simple, that's very simple terms by the together to say they snap together. There's a lot that goes on to make that happen, but this is the processor grid display. You can see that there's seven panels tall, but when you get a little closer look at them, each one of those squares is four individual LED tiles. So there are hundreds of LED tiles. So what they've done is they pop one out here, they're gonna replace it in this unit. It was just a cool photo I grabbed. Um, so each one of the squares is made up of four. All of this is not a concern to us as a presentation design because we care about two things. And I'm gonna simplify down this example. We, can, we are concerned about the brightness LED walls are not the same as projection. Projection is measured in lumens, it's bounced light. LED walls are measured in a nit. White backgrounds at screens are gonna generally be bad, whether it's projection or LED. With an LED wall, we're assuming the presenter is gonna be standing close to it. As you can see, these two guys, they're standing literally in front of the screen. If this becomes white, our presenter it becomes a silhouette because there's more light behind him than light in front of him. So suddenly the presenter looks horrible to the audience. And that's a concern for us as a presentation designer because we want our presenters to look good. With an LED wall set to a high knit or the brightness, the, we end up with silhouetting everything and the audience having a hard time looking at it. It can go from here to literally feeling like you're just looking into the sun. I mean, it is bright when you get things lit up. Uh, the image light is emitted, not bounced. Be concerned about it. Okay, moving away from that. Disclaimer number two. I will hopefully show some really impressive examples of real presentation projects. At least I, I think they're impressive. Hopefully you find them impressive as, as 
well. In addition to covering the cool presentation styling, I'm going to do a lot of the behind the scenes details on how files are set up and kind of the technical issues to consider. If the technical side of things doesn't apply to you, focus on the really big cool pictures. If they're, they're really cool, but I, am, I do have a lot of technical stuff in this talk. So it's a technical talk, so let's get into it. Okay, example number one, um, and I should have had a disclaimer saying I'm not really good about capturing photos of the meetings that I go to. So some of the photos, uh, I had to look really hard to find photos to, to come up with to make this talk. So here's a screen, recent meeting, handled all the presentation graphics for it. Um, we're gonna walk through the process of creating a PowerPoint file for this ultra wide screen. This is rear projection, not an LED wall configuration. Um, I unfortunately don't have notes on the physical size. So I'm guessing it's about 26 feet wide by eight feet tall. Could be a little bit off, but the key is it's big and it's a wider aspect ratio than a standard 16 by nine. On the technical side, let's start by saying this presentation is 3,840 pixels wide. That is two 16 by nine monitors or 1920 by 1080s side by side. We're also going to say that it's um, 1,080 pixels wide. So now we've got the dimensions. So why these dimensions? Again, 16 by nine, the industry standard is 1920 by 1080. Two 16 by nine side by side, 1920 plus 1920 gives us 3,840 pixels. In real life, this is what we could end up with. We can end up with a screen that looks like this and we could now know what we need to design PowerPoint to do or what PowerPoint needs to fit into. But it doesn't get that easy because the reality is AV setups do not position two projectors side by side. This is really funny. I'm using hand motions and I just realized my camera's turned off. So I'm talking with my hands. <laughs> Um, so there's there's two side by projectors don't align the edges. Uh, it's kind of something that's possible to set up, but near impossible to maintain as pixel a, pixel accurate. The setup adds an overlap or a blend region. It's important for us designing the presentation to understand this concept because if it's a projection presentation, it's almost guaranteed there's going to be a blend. And what the blend does is it literally moves the two screens and they overlap portions of it. The projection tech is going to align the projectors. The video switch is going to apply a soft edge blend to each of the projectors on their edging. So the purple screen gets a soft edge blend on its far left. The blue screen gets a soft edge blend on the uh, far right. They overlap and it should be a seamless color and alignment. The result of setup correct is a seamless projection canvas, but the result for us is we have a 240 pixel gap that has now got to be accounted for. So our 1920 plus 1920, 384 pixels, two monitors side by side. We now have to take that 240 pixels out. So now we have 3,600 pixels. So here is our real presentation screen. It still keeps the height, 1080. It's now 3,600 pixels wide. Hopefully everybody's good with that. I have no idea why I have all of these fade through black transitions. I apologize. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through my process of developing an ultra wide presentation. It's four steps. And we're gonna start with the specifications. And I'm gonna keep this talk by just saying, keep this talk simple by saying the specifications we need are the projection resolution. So we can check mark that. We know that for this project, we're gonna design a presentation that is 3,600 pixels wide by uh, 1,800, <laughs> by 1080 pixels high. Next, I'm going to start the design process in Photoshop, and I'm going to work in Photoshop and get the pixel sizing. I'm then going to convert in Photoshop to inches because PowerPoint only works in inches. Keynote, we got it easy. Keynote works in pixels. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to develop the PowerPoint presentation itself. Okay. Specifications. We got that. 3600 by 1080 is our projection. We're good there. Next up, we're gonna go into Photoshop, we're gonna go into image and size. We're gonna make our image 3600 pixels wide by 1080 tall. I'm going to use a resolution or a DPI of uh, 150 dots per inch or DPI. Note, I'm using 150 DPI. I'm also not going into the rationale of what DPI to use as there are many discussions about DPI. And the question is, what's the DPI? Should DPI matter? 
dots per inch is primarily for print files. It is not all, it, it does have an impact on creating art files for use in PowerPoint. So my choice on this project, 150 DPI. So there we go. Now I'm gonna convert the pixels to inches. I'm just gonna simply move the drop down here and I'm gonna let it convert. And it's gonna tell me, hey, that pixel count becomes 24 inches wide by 7.2 inches tall. That is perfect. I now know what to do in PowerPoint. I'm gonna move over to PowerPoint. I create a custom size or custom slide size page setup, 24 inches wide by 7.2 inches tall. And here's what my PowerPoint looks like. This presentation will fill that screen when I send the signal from my show computer to the video guys and they send it out to the wall. That's the math. It, there's, there's, there's a lot of details, but that is the simple exact math. So, and let's look at what this presentation looks like. We can have a title slide. Um, you know, the presentation design principles, they're pretty much the same as any presentation design. We want nice, big, bold, um, focal areas, good use of fonts. We want to minimize things going to the edge. There are some new design principles we need to add to our thinking when we're going with ultra wide. As example, a, um, we can make our content really big. We got a lot more room for the width. Typical presentation, the agenda, I would just make this a single list. Here I spread it across two. Uh, the other thing is transitions. I'm gonna back that up just so you can see it. A wipe transition, this is 26 feet long. It takes a long time for a wipe transition. I'm probably not going to use the wipe transition because the audience on the left is gonna think, see things a lot faster than the audience on the right, and this can become a little bit of a problem. I'm also not going to use cube, rotate, or Ferris wheel transitions because they, oh, where'd my Ferris wheel go? Oh no, okay, good. Ah, there it is. This is like watching a highway billboard fly off its frame. It could be disoriented. It could be scary for the audience. Just don't do these when you get to these massive screen sizes. Your audience is just not, it, it, it's very disoriented. We'll just go with that. But slide content, it's all the same styling principles we've used before. I am coming up to a Q&A section here, so I'm gonna address those in a little bit. Okay, we also need to think about how big things are. I mean, text can be really big. When we look at this on our laptop or on a webcast like we are now, it's, it's nice. It, you know, you could even be on a super cool 30 inch iMac. It's not the same as having these things as six foot tall letters like they are in real life. Here's our presenter, six foot tall presenter represented. That letter G looks like if it were to fall off the screen, it would just squish him. We have to be conscientious of sizing. What is a normal big size on a slide could become humongous on these larger screen areas. Okay, a few more examples on this. Oh, this one's really good. Normally, I try not to put content to the very edge or the very bottom. A lot of these uh, large screen setups, because they're elevated screens, I'm good with moving content to the very bottom. So just a little side note there. Okay. Here's where I'm gonna come to a Q&A, but I'm gonna first cough. <coughs> okay, let's see here. I'm gonna try and turn my video on. See how we do here. Let's read through what we got here. Wow, TLC magic, how often? Okay, here's a great question. How often do your clients have this information? I'm assuming you're talking about screen resolution and, um, and the technical specs. Very seldom. It's not really the client that's dictating it, it's the AV production company. So a lot of our clients are actually production companies that are putting on these meetings. They've sold a package to the client, their end client, and we're gonna get the information from the production company. Uh, other times we're actually specifying it ourselves. We're saying, here's a great idea, here's what we'd like to see at this meeting. Can your production company support this type of environment? So. I wouldn't expect clients to know this. You get to become the expert. We are the expert in the presentation design. It also rolls over to the video editor guys. It rolls over to lower thirds guys. It rolls over to, well, a lot of aspects. Okay, do you play presentations in the venue from your PC? Yes, I am not talking about how to work with the hardware because there are some huge 
concerns or knowledge base items where you need to know how to, what the limitations of a standard computer is and these type of environments. I'll touch on it a little bit here. Um, is there any other questions, Garland? Can I, I'm reading through to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope, those were the two that were, uh, were waiting. Fantastic, so okay. So, this is moving in a whole different direction. I really wanna cover this. This is really, really cool. So the center screen is an LED wall. It's an ultra wide, it's slightly bigger than 16 by nine. I'm not gonna really focus on that. What I'm really focusing on is these two screens right here. Because this is where your mind gets blown because we don't have to think in terms of the physical setup. These two screens are actually one presentation split to where it goes projected and they are LED. Um, so we knew the exact dimension. So let me walk through this project because this is, to me, this is just really cool. How you can just do things in presentation design, have it executed at an event, and it just looks awesome. No one would ever guess this is PowerPoint, by the way. That's my whole goal. That's how I started in presentation design. The idea was, hey, we've, we've got to use this PowerPoint thing, and we've got to make it look like it's not PowerPoint. Here's another view of this. We've got a 16 by 9 screen on the far left, 16 by 9 screen on the far right. That's basically for iMag. We'll talk about that later. We've got the center screen, which is where the presentation went. And then we had these um, accent graphics screens right here. And we're going to talk about how these two were built. Again, we're going to need the specifications. We're going to need Photoshop and pixels. We're going to convert that to inches, which is a little bit of a different conversation here. And we're going to build our PowerPoint. Here's the technical specs I got. This tells me everything about this show's technical setup. It tells me those two side screens are 1920 by 1080. I can look down here and they're literally 16 feet wide by nine feet tall. I can see my center LED wall, which we did develop a PowerPoint template for. I'm not gonna worry about that one. I can see these two side screens are 640 by 1024. Pretty small resolution overall. When it comes to sourcing or how many computers do we need to bring, uh, no video glitch. That's fantastic. I just don't get it. Um, you know, I, I looked at it and I said, okay, well, let's, let's work through this project. And what we can do is simplify this. If we take a single 1920 by 1080, 16 by nine computer screen output, I can give you both those screens within it because each of those are 640 by 1024. Those fit into here. Let's talk about that. Let's go into Photoshop. I'm going to do a 1920 by 1080, 150 DPI easy. I'm not going to convert it to inches because I don't need to. In Photoshop, here's what my Photoshop file looks like. Here's my 640 by 1024. This is totally not accurate because it's 1080 tall. <laughs> I made my mock-up a little bit inaccurate, but the idea is the same. I make my left screen here, I make my right screen here, and I have these bands on the outside where there is no content. They're just extra pixels I have coming from the computer that we're not using for the projection. I'm going to use a standard 16 by nine PowerPoint um, slide. Here's my slide. I've inserted my sort of almost right <laughs> slide design here. See, oh no, it is right. I actually scaled it up so I'd have full height. So this is actually accurate. Um, this represents a 640 by 1024 area scaled up to a full 1080 height. It's a little technical, but I had to say it out loud so I could justify it myself to myself. Um, and then I built out a whole presentation. I know that the left screen content, anything in this area is going to show up on that left screen the audience is looking at it, so stage right. I know that the right screen area, anything I put there is gonna show up on that right screen. Even though it's coming from one slide, it's gonna to go to two different screens, which is just an awesome way to think. Here's what the template looked like. Created a bunch of uh, styling, really went for a mirrored look throughout. I'm gonna show those a little bit larger. Here's the walk-in look. It was just a nice, simple, the logo as provided on the background, coordinated with the overall template. Here's another background. Here's another background. So throughout the meeting, <clears throat> we had these styles here where there, there was white. Again, they're outboard, so we're not gonna be, they're outside the presenter area, so they're not going to create sil silhouettes. But we have put these category informational things. So if you thought of an agenda, these could be like the things. In this case, hey, we're the category leader, and that presenter talked through why they were the category leader. This didn't happen at this event, but I love this car. Uh, it's another client of ours. So you know, if they were talking about the details of this car, I could have these cool things going here. Now, this is a weird-looking slide because I've got a front image and a back image of a car. But remember, there's 22 feet of space between the left and the right. So what people are gonna see is on the left side, they're gonna see this cool front view of the car. On the right side of the, of the presentation, they're gonna see this rear view, rear 
view of the car. It looks awesome when you do stuff like this, but when we're designing the slides, you kind of got to be able to imagine how this is working. Okay. Talking about their locations around the globe in the presentation, we put a nice cool abstract world map up there. We could put any type of content into this area. Again, I would want to keep it in the white space to, for design purposes. Here's another theme look. And I believe, is this one a video? Nope, static. Okay, so we're not worried about how the screens are split and positioned. That's the video switch ops job. We have designed, if we've designed all the correct technical specifications, we are good to design the template and the presentation and the video guys will take our file or our output and they'll make it do this. A few notes on animation. Transitions, yes to fades, yes to split from center out, looks really cool. Um, yes to wipe up and down transitions, but no to transitions that wipe from left because you're gonna see the left screen transition and then you're gonna see the right screen transition. That does not look right because the audience is looking at both screens simultaneously and there's another bit of content in the middle. I also would not use push, cube, Ferris wheel. Basically, we wanna show the two screens are connected. We don't wanna show the two screens are connected from a single source. We want the illusion of they've got a ton of cool stuff going on here. Da, 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 da. I'm reading questions really quick. Okay, I'll hold off on that one. Okay, I have a lot of content. I'm definitely gonna have a time check here. I wanna walk through this one because this is taking that first presentation and we're making it even bigger. So let's walk through how we're gonna make PowerPoint the presentation source for this screen right there. Here is a, I, I, first of all, the projection setup view is awesome every time you look at it because it tells you the behind the scenes. Audience never gets to see this. Um, using the previous example, we're gonna do the exact same steps to set up, a, set up the presentation PowerPoint file. Uh, from this photo, which is far more than we generally receive when specking a project, because this is now on site and I get to see what the projectionist is doing and hopefully we've all worked from the same technical specs. This is a three projector blend. So we can see projector one, projector two, and projector three. The blue areas represent the blend. So three projectors wide, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, three 1920 by 1080 projectors wide. 1920 times three is 5760, but I know by looking at this, my projection is actually from left to right 4320 pixels across. So I'm gonna take 5760 minus 4320, this is a lot of math, that gives me 1,440 1, 440 pixels. I know that these two blue regions are going to be that much. So if I take 1,440 divided by two, each of these blue regions is 720 pixels wide. Really not important for us to know or work with in the presentation. We're really concerned about the number right here, this 4320, but blend regions are nice to be aware of. This is actually a really big blend. Blends are usually in the, 250 to 350 pixel range, and this one's 720 pixels. So it's kind of an interesting setup. Here's what the audience, or what the presenter would see. This is the reason that screen is so big. This is an arena show. We're missing, I don't know, 500 seats on the floor. It's a big space. It needs a big screen to make the staging look proportional, or you can just have a really big area with a small screen and things don't look impressive. Okay, we're gonna go through the specifications. We're gonna go through the Photoshop in pixels, we're then gonna go through having Photoshop give us the inches, and then we're gonna make our PowerPoint presentation. Specifications, easy. We just talked through all that, 4320 by 1080. Here's my Photoshop file. Again, 4320 by 1080 at 150 pixels wide. Hang in there, this is gonna be a really good trick, tip. I convert it to inches, it's 28.8 by 7.2. Perfect, we can now go design our presentation, but I really wanna look at this number right here, the 7.2 inches. I don't wanna use that, and here's why. If I go over to PowerPoint, I could make it 28.8 by 7.2. We'd have a slide, no problem at all. But here's our standard 16 by nine screen, 13.3333 by 7.5. 7.5 is really important. It's a great tip to look at matching the height. This will make moving content from 16 by nine slides to the ultra wide much cleaner as the canvas height is the same on both the small 16 by nine and our ultra wide. It will just naturally size itself closer to what is needed. So let's go back to Photoshop. Here's my pixel count. 
here's the inches. I am now going to adjust the height to 7.5, and it tells me my PowerPoint slideshow should be 30 inches wide by 7.5 inches tall. And with that, I'll set up PowerPoint, 30 inches wide, 7.5 inches tall, and here is my super wide, ultra wide presentation ready for design. Here's our ultra wide presentation. Remember, 60 feet across on this screen. The question is, and this is rhetorical, I'm not gonna open up to Q&A. Does the presenter name and title kind of look small and wimpy on this screen? The answer is no. Those letters are two feet tall. They're just small because it's such a huge screen. If we put that on a 16 by nine, they'd be massive. So we've got it, we get to think about that. This was also a pretty conservative corporate client. So everything stayed in line with their corporate template even when we made it really, really big. So there are some reasons for it to be a little bit subdued. Um, let's see here, I'm going to ask this question. What is this layout? Because this is a pretty common thing. I'll give you a hint, this is a 16 by nine area. What this is, is an ultra wide canvas is, an ultra wide presentation is a fantastic canvas until a presenter shows up with their 16 by nine presentation. So. We're now running two PowerPoint presentations from separate computers, I'll say. The first one is the ultra wide. That's our blue background. It's basically become a very expensive background, but a background that can do a lot of things. The second computer is running a 16 by nine presentation. That presentation is pipped or picture in picture on top, positioned and size. Same ideas in your living room and watching two football games at the same time. You know, it's a pip. We can position them anywhere. Now, We've introduced the idea of pips and content. This is our next common element, live camera, the presenter, or iMag. This is an arena-sized show. People are literally 200 feet away. They cannot see the facial expressions of the presenter. So a live camera shot of the presenter while they're presenting is great. This camera shot's about seven feet tall. It's perfect for the audience. And so this area here would become camera. This would become the presentation. And there's a lot more things going on here. But we're literally looking at Background layer, one. 16 by nine presentation, two. iMag, we've got three layers of content being shown on our ultra wide canvas. We sometimes have to account for that in our slide design. My slide design has the event theming down here positioned underneath the iMag, so I had to know about all these elements to put them in place. I'm gonna really run out of time. Here's a little bit of a look at this uh, screen in use. Staging, it's awesome. Okay. I'm gonna go into Q&A, and then I think I've got, Garland, I've got 10 minutes, because I'm kind of doing the Q&As throughout, so I should have at least 10 more minutes of talk time, correct? Yep, 10 more minutes to be fine. Okay, great. Okay. Um, <laughs> how does the pitch for this go <laughs> to the client or the production company? How do you pitch these big, massive things or these multi-screen things? You know. I can pitch them and we're brought in as a technical content director for a lot of our meetings and we propose ideas. Most presentation designers are gonna be given this information and um, you know, it's, it's not really our concern. We're just gonna design whatever the wild uh, creation that the production company came up, up with. I am brought in to a lot of pitches to explain it and give examples, do mock-ups and stuff along those lines, but we're generally not playing sales guy for that. I love the comment here and somebody says, hey, a guy vacuuming, you know, I'm gonna back up because that is a really, again, I, I'm not out front when the meeting happens. Will that play if I go there? <clears throat> I'm busy actually running the presentation. I'm backstage with, uh, with about 45 other guys running, making everything work here. And then there's probably another 15 guys out front. Um, but that's a, you know, this is the type of shots I get. <laughs> Sometimes it's during rehearsals, but that gives you a good size perspective on this scale of this presentation. Okay, let me quickly dive into here to see what we got. Okay, good. That is the extent of the technical conversation. I'd actually hope to have 15 minutes, so I'm running a little bit behind here, but I'm totally up to, you know, here, I'll, I'll actually do this. This is kind of fun. Because I was concerned, I actually gave myself a time check slide just to make sure we were on track. So my time check is, I've got a little less than 10 minutes. All I have is example images of shows, live events. So you can see slides, you can see staging, you can see ultra wide PowerPoint in use. Can 
anybody's free to chime in. I'm going to keep looking at the Q&A or the chat panel, I guess it is. And I'm going to, uh, oh, you know what? Oh, good. I was looking at the wrong panel. So you guys can answer, ask any questions as you go. I'm just going to rattle off just fun talks about different, um, different events. So this meeting is really cool. First thing is, the big canvas you see behind us, that's actually a white scrim and they have some up lighting and they have some fantastic mover lights. It almost looks like it could be a presentation design or a video element. It's all done with lighting. This is really cool because now we get this incredibly ultra wide, all encompassing area that's staged. These are two massive seamless edge 16 by nine screens. And then we have this giant center screen. This is a panel of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people across. There's room for more. So you have eight people on stage and this screen is, is dwarfing them. I have a little zoom in here so we can see that center screen. We have a lot of stuff going on here. Close up of this ultra wide. For this segment, the ultra wide screen is just becoming a background graphic. So we got this preset as a slide design. We got this nice look here and we have content laid over top of it. On the left, and on the far right are four by three PowerPoint presentations. Yes, I still see some four by three presentation content. The center is a 16 by nine video feed. This is a live video feed from a, from a hospital. This is a live operation happening. What's really cool is you look in this lower right-hand corner, this is a live IMAG shot of one of the panelists down below. So we have four layers of content happening on this ultra wide screen of which we're responsible for only two of them. The background is our responsibility is number one. The slides are number two, those are our responsibility. The live camera feed is the responsibility of two different video teams. And then the local IMAG uh, shot of one of the panelists is there. So we got four layers of content happening on this one screen. It's a cool show. Cool award show, very elegant um, awards banquet. I designed all the presentation visuals for, the reason I wanted to bring this one up. The screen is curved. Does this matter to us as a presentation designer? No, not really. It's the same design process. We want to know the resolution. We want to build out the custom ultra wide. The video guys are going to do it. Every now and then I'll ask how much the curve is and if there's any visual obstruction because if somebody's sitting over here, I don't want them, I don't want to put content on this far edge if they can't see it. I'll center up my content a little bit more. Uh, I'll also ask sometimes what the physical size is because that'll determine how big the curve is. But for the most part, PowerPoint, we don't have to worry about the curve. We're not gonna do anything. The, the projectionists, they get to worry about a lot of things in setting up a curved projection. Okay, PowerPoint in this show is really just 16 by nine pips, but I just wanted to show this because this one is so cool. This curve is literally a full 360 degrees around the audience. It was an audience of at least 300, maybe 400. And here's what they said. So we had this in the round look. There's the audience sitting all the way around. And what we did is we ran PowerPoint in pips all the way around and we had ran, ran these video uh, uh, graphics all the way around. Obviously, they're still working on the alignment. Again, I'm often taking photos of things well before things are finalized and ready for show. But this is just, you know, people say, hey, it could be a curved screen. Yeah, this is really extremely curved. It's just cool. Okay. Or it could be no curves at all. This is, I mean, let's just say this is a four foot tall podium or a lectern. Excuse me, it's a lectern sitting on a podium. And this is my main screen. I have these left and right screens. Take a look at this a little further back. This is an all-encompassing look. PowerPoint's driving the whole thing. A video projection. A video guys are driving the whole thing. There's a lot going on here. But these are, even though they're three separate screens, just like the earlier one, these are a single source being put to all three screens. You can see this angle connects down here. This blue downward angle connects over here. I think I have another slide of this. And this is it in motion. So this is a video roll. Again, I'm not running the slides, so I can't take a picture of me running the slides. But you can see the video is seamless all the way across this whole event. Did the same thing for the presentations. We also ran PIP presentations and IMAG areas as well, which is cool stuff. Where am I at on time? Okay, I'm watching my time. This is that 80 foot long, 12 foot high LED wall. This is what people look like standing in front of it. It's me, here's me goofing around, but I created this background. I literally built a virtual set. I am now inside this building. Things get surreal when you get into these large scale. That's a PowerPoint slide. Here is, okay, so the virtual set idea was really cool and we used it for each walk-in session where each 
where our team at TLC Creative, we created these beautiful cinemagraphs. So we had portions of it that were motion video, most of it was static. And the idea was you were looking out of an office building at landmarks around the globe. So in this case, this meeting was at this part of the world, uh, in Arizona, so we're looking at this. We made this just beautiful thing, but this whole virtual building framing is all made up by us in Photoshop and then, well, in this case, video. Same idea applied to the slides. Okay. According to my timing, Garland, I have two minutes left. I will open it up to any q and I'll also just end with this here. My contact information, our website. We're getting a full rebuild. Don't go to the website now. It's really old content. Hopefully by, eh, I'll say March, we'll have the whole new one up. PowerPoint, blog, check it out. I will make a note to that in one second. And the presentation podcast. Hey, listen to three of us talk about presentations twice a month. Two, first Tuesday and third Tuesday. Of, no. Yeah, first Tuesday and third Tuesday of the month. Questions, questions. What is an IMAG shot? Hey, you, you, per, you spelled IMAG perfectly, I-M-A-G. It stands for image magnification. It is a camera shooting a live, something live. Generally, it's the presenter. So when you get the big video of the presenter going, um, we do a lot of product shots. So if we're working for an automotive company or a toy company, IMAG may be close-ups of the car or the actual toy, but it's image magnification on screen. Um, Oh man, that might be it. This is awesome. Garland, if everybody's good, I got through all my content. I'm very excited. Hopefully this made sense. Oh, the last thing, the PowerPoint blog and Garland will send out an email. I will put together a PDF. I haven't finished it yet. That kind of covers the four steps of developing ultra wide. It's going to be very simplistic. It's going to be based on that first um, presentation. I will put a blog post up within the next week that has a download link to it. Garland said he would also send out an email to everybody that registered this for this event so you can get it, make use of it. It's just to give some good guidelines for how to make PowerPoint work in these really big sizes. Fantastic, Troy. That was awesome. Thank I you. How'd I do? You know, I guess I'm actually ahead, aren't I? I'm basing it on your 10 minute queue. So I may have sped up more than I needed to because... <laughs> Well, there's always the benefit of, of, you know, ending early and then people can ask more questions, right? So, so somebody I'm free for question. anybody to ask questions, yeah. I'll go back to this one because I just love, this was, this is a very recent project and these videos, by the way, when we rendered them, they're, uh, they were between 10 and 13 gigs per video. So yeah, big stuff. I want walls like this in my house. I mean, I, <laughs> I think we should be able to choose the outdoors we want to look at. I, it was really cool. Um, are, you are you compressing these video files? These video files are not, oh, these are running in ProRes. So it's not a highly compressed video file format. They are compressed. You know, an AVI would be, I don't know, an uncompressed AVI on this would be maybe 30, 40 gigs, I'm guessing. So yeah, they're compressed, but you know, it's a full res. This is a uh, 9,000... 400 and some pixels across. I mean, it's big. This is crazy resolution. And Melody had also asked earlier, um, if it's not rude, can I ask what the production budgets are for these types of events? <laughs> well, so, you know, I can't answer that a little. And I'm not going to give hourly rates or project rates, but I'll say how much it costs in time. We do a lot of pre-production for, for shows, production companies, and clients where they just want us to develop the template, make, make the ultra-wide template, make all the custom specifications. We're going to do between 10 and 20 hours, uh, like that blue template we saw at the very, well, not very beginning. Let me just zip back here. Mm -hmm. It's like a template that's going to be set up like this. There was a lot of layouts. There's actually about 20 some custom layouts, uh, which were basically the slide backgrounds to account for all the different types of configurations and content needs. And then we built slides for a couple of the key presenters. 10 to 20 hours. This is a pretty straightforward thing. Something like this uh, video wall. Well, actually, let's just go to this one. Something like this, we're going to be upping that. You're Because now we're building out not only the template, but the whole awards presentation you're looking in a 20 to 60 hour project for pre-production and then we're generally on site and making edits and changes there, which is where project budgets get a little bit confusing because we're actually paid a flat day rate to be at these events and we're doing design work as well as running them. So it gets a little confusing there, but it's not extremely, it's not an extreme amount over building a 16 by nine presentation or a 16 by nine template. It's just, you got to do a little math up front, do a little more, 
behind the scenes you know, operative talking to the different production company and techs and finding out what your specifications are, but it's really not a, a bigger process. Um, the design can be a little bit more. So in the questions area, Chris has asked, do you run the large videos from within PowerPoint? Um, many times, yes. I've actually had a problem with PowerPoint as of about the past six months. Looping videos don't loop seamlessly anymore. I'm a little distraught. Um, so we used to run all the opening videos. Whenever I can, I try and hand the videos off to a, if there's an actual video tech running Playback Pro uh, or any other type of video system, I like it to run from there because they have more options. Um, I hate the ability to, where's one with a video? Hold on, which was a video? Um, where's my vacuuming guy? Do, 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 video. I hate this. I never want to see this bar down here during a show, and I cannot get that onto the presenter view. So therefore, I'm trying to avoid video just to not ruin the aesthetics of the whole meeting by throwing up extra stuff. Do AV guys have issue with PowerPoint? Some, depends on what PowerPoint they've seen. Most of the companies I work with, they're like, let TLC handle it, we're good with it because our job is to make PowerPoint that doesn't look like PowerPoint. That should become our slogan because that's what we do. Um, and also a lot of times the technical aspects, a lot of people don't understand how to design technical aspects. Hopefully everybody now has a basis of how to do it because we see things show up and we're like, this is a cool PowerPoint ultra wide, but it's not going to fit the actual event technical stuff. So we've got a problem here. Um, so yeah, there are, there are some issues with uh, power. Now, Yes, there are issues with presentation being used for anything on a show as opposed to video. That might be more of the background, but maybe the question is, do they have a problem with PowerPoint over Keynote? I would say Keynote is superior in the fact that it works in pixels and you can quickly guarantee that it's gonna size up and a Mac is a Mac. You know things are always gonna work. Um, we didn't talk about hardware and I don't really wanna get into it, but there are a lot of computers I would not even wanna put this single logo up on because they're underpowered to do a transition or do anything speedy. We're running some pretty robust computers to make sure it works. So we're pretty good with the AV guys. I can't say everybody is or that it always goes smooth for everybody. Great, oh, you know great. I do have one other thing because we talked about video compression. I do compress presentations and PowerPoint, if you'll notice, when you go to export a video, they now have 3840 by 2160, so they have 4K resolution. So they, they're doing better when you do their optimized images, they can go up to 4K. Uh, we use NX PowerLite because you can still plug in custom parameters. I will compress an, a presentation down to you know, 5,760 pixels wide, just to make sure I'm at least using semi-optimized images and trying to keep the manage the file size. So we are managing our file content. We're also developing almost every single image in Power, uh, excuse me, we're optimizing every single image in Photoshop and then importing it into PowerPoint so we know we're at a, the correct, the most optimized pixel size for it, I guess is what I'll say there. So hopefully that does it. And check out the blog, got a ton of answers there. Check out the podcast, listen to us. And I totally appreciate the opportunity to have this talk with everybody, thanks. Thanks so much, Troy. That was fantastic.